Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Creality's new CR Scan Otter 3D Scanner. A while back, I reviewed their CR Scan Ferret, which came in really handy for modeling the fairing on my custom electric motorcycle. But it was a little bit tricky to maintain tracking with it, and the object sizes that you can scan with it are limited. The new CR Scan Otter, however, is much easier to use, and it's a lot more versatile than previous models. It comes in a rugged case just like the Scan Ferret, but it is noticeably larger. Included inside is a quick start guide, a scanning pad, a calibration board, USB adapters, reflective markers, a cleaning cloth, a lanyard, USB cables, a small ceramic owl for test scanning, and the scanner itself. It has anti-shake capability, innovative 4 lens stereo vision with 8 infrared lights and 2 LED fill lights, 24-bit color scanning with the ability to also scan black and metal objects, and it can do it at a rate of 20 frames per second. So even those with the shakiest hands can easily scan almost anything ranging from a coin to a full-size vehicle, either indoors or outdoors, and generate a full-color 3D model of it with an accuracy of 0.02 millimeters using this scanner. It also meets Class 1 laser safety, so you can even scan yourself or other people with no risk to their eyes or skin. The first thing that I scanned was the owl that came with the kit. I made a black turntable for scanning small objects like this in the last video, which made the process a lot easier. The USB cable secures to the scanner with a screw so it doesn't fall out when you're scanning, and the other end connects to a USB 3 port on a PC or laptop, which needs to have at least 8GB of RAM to run the scanner and Creality Scan software. The ring indicator will glow either green, red, or blue depending on the status of the scanner, and the controls can be used for starting or pausing a scan and real-time exposure adjustments. After connecting to the PC, I opened Creality Scan software, which can be downloaded for free from Creality's website. To start a new scan, I clicked the New Scan button on the home page, then named the project and selected the settings that I wanted to use. Three more windows appear after clicking the Scan button. The large window shows the object that you're scanning, with the green highlights representing the real-time scanned areas. The other shows the light exposure, which will glow different colors depending on the exposure level to let you know if it needs adjusted or not. And the last window provides a full color view of the object that you're scanning. The colored vertical bar indicates the focal distance between the scanner and the object. The trick is to adjust the focal distance to keep the waveform in the optimal green area. If it moves into the blue, then that means the scanner is too far away, and if it moves into the red, then the scanner is too close. Once I had the focal distance set, I pressed the start button on the scanner to start scanning. This was surprisingly easier to use than the scan ferret. I only lost tracking once and it was no problem getting it back. As I mentioned earlier, you can also pause a scan so you can make adjustments to the object, then restart and pick up where you left off to finish the scan, and you can even merge multiple models together if you are scanning something large. I figured I had captured enough detail after 10 minutes, so I stopped the scan and started processing the model. The software provides simple one-click processing for beginners, or you can use the optimization and mesh settings to manually adjust resolution and face count according to your needs. There's also an option to fill holes in the model caused by insufficient scanning, and to close the bottom of simple objects like this owl and make it ready for 3D printing without any need for CAD software. After meshing, the color mapping can be done as well. A couple of features are off slightly, probably due to me losing tracking that one time, but overall it did a really good job mapping colors, and the model itself turned out great with no issues at all. From here, I imported it into Cura Slicer software to slice it and generate a G-code for printing. I used my Ender 3 V2 printer from Creality, so I selected that profile and the 0.16mm layer presets for it in the software. After slicing, I previewed the layers to make sure everything looked good, then exported the decode to an SD card and then imported it into the Ender 3 for printing, which took roughly 8 hours to finish.
Just like the model, the print turned out great too. You can see from this side-by-side -side comparison that almost every detail was captured, and there was still room to increase the resolution for even better quality. With the test out of the way, I moved on to making a cowl for my motorcycle. As I mentioned in the Scan Ferret video, I like these scanners because as a builder I can model things in the real world and convert them to digital a lot quicker and easier than I can model them in CAD. To model the cowl, I opted for bending it out of a thin aluminum sheet this time instead of carving it from foam because there are no compound curves to deal with and these smooth surfaces and straight edges will speed up the post-processing in CAD after it's scanned. This aluminum is just a common flashing flat stock that's sold pre-painted in a variety of colors at most building supply stores. The trick to bending it without a metal break is to lightly score the face opposite of the direction that you're bending with a knife and a straight edge. Then fold it along the score line to produce a straight bend. But don't score too deep or bend too far too many times because this is also a sufficient way to cut this material too. When done right, this method will work fine for making non-structural objects but it shouldn't be relied on for making something that's going to see a lot of use or experience any force other than its own weight. After the model was made and test fit on the bike, I prepped both it and the turntable for scanning. Because it's simple geometry with smooth surfaces and a bright color which can be difficult to scan without pretreatment, I figured it was a good opportunity to show you how to use marker mode. For this, Creality supplied these reflective markers, which need to be placed sporadically on the model and table at least one centimeter apart and in such a way so that there's always at least four of these markers in the camera frame while scanning to ensure the scanner can see them and doesn't lose track. After the markers were on, I set the parameters for marker mode and started scanning. Again, this was surprisingly easy and the model turned out great, so I imported it into SketchUp CAD software to remove the portions that weren't needed, then smooth the faces and sharpen the edges a little better. Next, I created a copy of the model to serve as the bottom shell, then centered it with the original and scaled it down so that it formed a 2.5mm space between them. Then I added another face to the front for both shells, connected their bottom edges together, and it was ready to slice and print. Because it's larger than the bed on my Ender 3, I had to print the cowl with a different machine from another brand, so out of respect for Creality, I won't show that. But while that was printing, I decided to try scanning the entire motorcycle. I didn't quite get the entire bike scan, but what I did get done looks great. This experience leads me to mention the one complaint that I have about the scanner though. As you can see from the video, I had to pause and reposition the bike and myself five or six times throughout the process because the cable is just a bit too short for jobs like this unless you're connected to a smaller device like a laptop that you can easily move around with you. It's not a deal breaker for me. The cable could be even shorter and I would still enjoy using the scanner.
but it would be more convenient if the cable was long enough to stretch around large objects like vehicles without needing to move your PC with it. The cowl was finished printing after around 4 hours and it looked good for the most part. I did have some extrusion issues on one side for some reason, but this is just a test piece to help mock up the bike, establish mounting points, and refine the design. I'm sure I'll make a couple of changes to this before I'm ready to make the actual part. So that's it for this video folks. Overall I'm really impressed with this scanner. It's a nice step up from the scan ferret in terms of both function and ease of use. Not that the scan ferret isn't a good scanner, but this is a really good scanner. I think Creality did a fine job with it, but let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for the next one. Until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.